This podcast is supported by listeners like you. We're grateful for your tax-deductible donation at newthoughtphilly.org or the link in the episode description. A practical prayer is a prayer that works. These discussions between Reverend Bill Marcioni and Carol Lawrence dive into the details of how it works and how to work it. Reverend Bill is a New Thought minister and the author of Practical Prayer for Real Results. Your new life begins with a new thought. Carol Lawrence is on a spiritual quest, finding the New Thought teaching after decades on the pulpit in three different traditional denominations. I've got some questions. Together, they're exploring the philosophy and activities that come together from many of the world's religions to create the practical spirituality that is New Thought. Welcome to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol Lawrence here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. We're going to talk, talk, talk. Talk, 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 talk. And you wanted to talk, talk about gratitude today. Yeah, yeah, I which do. Which I love. That's one of my favorites. And I didn't know that. I didn't oh, yeah. Know that. Well, yeah. I cycled through it. There are five or sometimes seven, but five major steps to a practical prayer. And gratitude is the next to last one of them. And I go through phases where different ones are my favorite. Mm. And a lot of times gratitude is my favorite. And the reason is that gratitude is the one that you can actually feel. You can actually feel that in your body. And I mean, everybody who's listening, if you just take a moment, maybe close your eyes, you don't even have to, but feel gratitude. Feel where that shows up in your body. Bring to mind something that you're grateful for, some experience that you had, which made you feel very thankful. And you can feel it. Sometimes it's in your heart. Sometimes it's in your gut. Sometimes it's, you know, tightening up in the back of your throat, wherever it is. But you can feel gratitude. So, and that's the visceral one. The other steps in prayer tend to work in our head a little bit. Sometimes when the affirmations, we can feel that in our bones as well. But the gratitude is the one that we can feel. We can feel it. But it's something that I think we have to be very conscious of. And as I shared before, you can say thank you, and that's good manners. Mm -hmm. you know. And if somebody doesn't say thank you, the other person probably notices it and wonders what's wrong with you. But it could be used as a reflex, and you just keep going. Mm -hmm. But to really be thankful and gratitude. It's a feeling, but I think you have to think about it. It's a good thing to think about it. Oh, it's always a good thing to think about. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but the value I think is in thinking about it because maybe that's what triggers the feeling. I didn't think about it on a feeling level. I think I was still stuck in my head from talking to the young man I was telling you about. Oh yeah. Who just, you know, he transformed his life and is feeling gratitude. Yeah. He, thanks and for that. In his old space, which, you know, I'm grateful to have known him there also, in his old space, there wasn't very much gratitude. It was more of entitlement. And I'm entitled to certain things. And things would go well for him, but it was very much entitled. And maybe because he hit a roadblock or whatever, but something happened. And he began talking in a different tone, in different language about being grateful for very small things, acknowledging that where he is right now is not where he wants to be, but so grateful just to be in this place. Mm -hmm. And when he talked about what he wanted in the future, it was small. And I said, do you really, you know, are you just asking for little things for, he said, no, I'm just so grateful to have this. And if whatever I get after that, is good, is nice, but I'm grateful to have this. Beautiful. It was really something. Yeah. Practitioner friend of mine uh, used to talk about an attitude of gratitude. Mm -hmm. He was from Philly, so he actually talked about an attitude of gratitude, which is <laughs> very Philadelphia-esque. But that is so accurate, to be able to adopt an attitude of gratitude, to be thankful in all things, because... When we go from having lack or insufficiency or longing in our lives and it starts to change, we get that trend of things improving. 
we get any gratitude because this is getting better. We are on an upward trajectory and it doesn't matter that I'm not at the end of the climb. It mm -hmm. doesn't matter that I haven't arrived at my final destination. I'm maintaining that attitude of gratitude because things are getting better and better and better. The ever upward spiral. And it's not just tied to things, receiving things, material things, I should say it that way. It's not just material things, but it could be for me, for example, I am so grateful to be in the space of new thought. I have always been there for years and years before, but to be able to sort of come out of the closet, I love to use that term, <laughs> come out of the closet. I just think it's so appropriate. But, you know, because it's a freedom that I can express fully what I think and not have to weigh it out in terms of who I'm talking to and what situation I'm in, it doesn't really matter. And I'm grateful, a sense of huge gratitude for that. Not a nickel came with it, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> <laughs> nothing, except yeah. for freedom. Yeah, and so and I, I, I know what you're talking about. I mean, there are times when I've known somebody and I've known somebody else and I got the idea, hey, I'd like to introduce them and get them together. And it turns into a fabulous partnership or friendship or romance or whatever it is. And I just get glee out of that. Mm -hmm. Now, it's them having a wonderful time, but it's still, I'm getting something out of it. And it's not a material something. And it's, you know, just maybe it's the splash of the love or the depth of friendship or connection. That's wonderful. I, unfortunately, have not had that experience. I tried to match make and it doesn't work. So... <laughs> well, this, up until now, let's use up, up until, until now. Because okay. Probably when you were trying that, you were the old, now recovering control freak, card carrying <laughs> control freak, Carol. And in those situations, no, matchmaking doesn't work because you can't match that. Score. I don't know whether it was that. I'm just saying <laughs> it never works. So, you know, I figure that's not my gift. I'm glad you have it. Okay. Well, it's not like a that's I'm not going to make a job out of that, but every once in a while it happens. And but it's are, neat, you know. I would think it's wonderful. Kind of, yeah, yeah, fun friendship. So, gratitude is a step in practical prayer, and the sequence of a practical prayer is we start with the recognition step, where we recognize the infinite creative power that creates everything. We turn our attention to spirit. So that's turning away from all of the ideas that I'm going to be doing this, that I need to manage this myself. I am in partnership with this infinite creative power that creates galaxies, that creates everything. So that's the first step is to identify that divine power and presence. The second step is the unification step where I say that since God created everything, everywhere, everyone, God created me, has to have, it's not possible. I'm the, only, I'm the sole exclusion from the God creation. It's like everything is God except me. So that's not possible. So it's all God and I too am that divine presence right here and right now. And from that place of empowerment, because we're now speaking with the authority of that divine creative power, we set an intention. We state our affirmation or our realization step where we claim the good that we're inviting. I have my perfect loving relationship. I am prosperous and have plenty of money to pay the bills. I am healthy and vital and well. I am guided clearly, free thinking, whatever it is that we want to be praying for, that goes into that realization step. And as soon as we have stated what it is that we are bringing into the world, whatever we are letting that creative power loose upon, we go into the gratitude step. Because we have just created this newness. In partnership with the infinite, we have created this new experience in our life. And what else is there but to be grateful? Oh my God, I'm so grateful for this good that's already in the process of happening. This good is already on its way. So there's a gratitude for the good that's already happening. And there's a gratitude for the awareness of the process and the ability to activate it. And there's a gratitude to be able to work with that creative law. It doesn't matter really what it is that we're grateful for. Mm. We can be grateful for anything. It's that feeling, that experience of gratitude that activates the whole thing. We're letting loose the, I'm making this happen. And that completes the process of turning it over to that infinite power that creates everything is creating this. And I'm grateful for this newness to be part of that whole process. So wind back just a second, where that space where you talked about, it doesn't matter what you're grateful for. 
Mm-hmm. And I think that's really important because I remember when I first tried practical prayer and you were, I think it was the first class I was in with you, you know, and I'm trying to connect the gratitude part to what it, the specific thing that I was praying for. And sometimes it didn't really work so hot, you know, mm-hmm. because, but then when I heard, I guess you say somewhere I heard that you could be great. It's a space. It's a gratitude space. It's a feeling. It's a, right. And you could be grateful for anything. So I started practicing. If I wasn't quite feeling gratitude, it could have been an area of unbelief or whatever in what I was praying for. But I thought, okay, let me start thinking about things that I am grateful for. And I get into a different headspace. You know, my whole feeling, and you said it was that, that whole feeling of being grateful for just being here grateful for the privilege of knowing everything that I know. Mm -hmm. Just grateful for knowing that there is such a thing as a practical prayer and that there's a science to it. And that if I follow this, you know, even if I don't understand it, it's working because this is how it works. So I'm grateful for that. So I think, you know, the gratitude part, it gets not a big enough space, you know, sometimes. I mean, not you. You said you're all into the gratitude. But I just think that it's like really a great thing because it just moves. Maybe it gets you out of the way. It softens your resistance. I don't know. Yeah. You know, I'm a psych major, so I'm going to go all into that thing about <laughs> <laughs> what it does for you psychologically and takes you to a different place. But it does, you know, and it's like, takes you out of spirit's way in a way. Yeah. There are parts of new thought that start with a gratitude step. And then right before the end, also the next to last one is another gratitude step. So you can't do that too much. Mm -hmm. And the idea of being grateful for the specific experience that we're having is fine. But we still need to remember that we are not specifically creating the experience ourselves. So for example, if the first of the month is coming up and I need to be able to pay the rent and So my prayer is to be able to pay the rent. And I do that as my prayer. And I go to the gratitude step and said, I'm so grateful that Bobby pays me back the $500 that he owes me so that I can pay for the rent. I don't want to do that. I don't want to be grateful for that specific thing because that's going to limit the channel through which my good can flow. And I don't want to have any other constraint on I am grateful for this. So if I've now set my intention to have plenty of money to pay the rent and cover the rest of the bills and everything else that I'm involved in financially, and I go to gratitude over that, then that leaves an awful lot of flexibility for the infinite to deliver my good in the way of a bonus or an unexpected insurance payment or a lotto win or a gift or, 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 or it doesn't make any difference. Or that deadbeat Bobby could give me the 500 bucks. (laughs) (laughs) let's take a break and come back and talk some more about gratitude get inspiration in an instant god calls are the gentle and uplifting moment of truth to help you remember that the bright light of god's love is shining right now as you it's your god call with Reverend Bill. Start your two-week free trial today, and you'll get a phone call four times a week from Reverend Bill with an uplifting half-minute message filled with insight, wisdom, story, and fun. Let your light shine. You can answer the call to listen to it live or let it go to voicemail so you can hear it later. After the free trial, your subscription is just five ninety-five a month. The details are at godcall.org. God calls are disruptive, intentionally. Whenever you write something, put on a gold star. They take you away from your routine to remind you about the truth of who you really are. They come at random times between 8.15 a.m. and 6 p.m., so you won't be expecting them. And somehow, the message is exactly what you need to hear at the time. Magic is loose in the world. It's a moment of motivation in the middle of your day. Find out more and start your two-week free trial now. Welcome back to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol, your 
here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. We're and talking about gratitude today. Yeah. yeah. Adopting an attitude of gratitude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that ain't said like that in West Philly, so. <laughs> Maybe it was just Sam. I've heard that, though. So you were going to tell me. You were going to say something you said before we left. We're going to come back and talk about something with gratitude. Oh, we're going to, oh, we're going to talk more about gratitude. This, oh. you know, we're going to continue the discussion of gratitude. I think before the break, I made you laugh by talking about that deadbeat Bobby paying back the $500. <laughs> you did. You did. <laughs> it can happen anywhere. The channels through which our good can flow are only limited by the limitations that we put on them and our imagination. And we get out of the way, all so much more is possible. Let me give you an example. This happened to me really recently. This is absolutely wonderful. You know, I'm always working on something. I always got something going. And my kids and my friends laugh at me because, you know, I know you got something going. So I'm real serious about discussing everything with spirit. And so the conversation that happens at 5 a.m. with spirit is amazing, right? It could be a great reality (laughs) TV show. (laughs) Sometimes I laugh at a conversation with spirit myself. But anyway, I just felt like I'm a person that I don't ask for money and I should. I think I'm going to start, but I don't. I ask for opportunities because, you know, I'm like corporate grown. I I came up with, you know, if you got a chance to get in there and do your thing, the money's going to be there. So I'm into opportunities. And I just one day just... When I got up out of my little chair, I just raised my hands and thanked the whole universe for the opportunities that are coming. And I really don't know what they were, but I had an overwhelming feeling that opportunities were going to come. And I was just got into this gratitude thing about just being grateful. Mm -hmm. And I knew some opportunities were going to come that were different. Didn't know what, but I felt it. And Maybe a couple of days later, somebody asked my husband to do something and he said, you know, that's your thing. So he kicked the ball to me. And I thought, whoa, look at this. (laughs) (laughs) Look at this opportunity that just, I just caught this ball. Okay. And then as I thought more about it, I put, you know, dressed the mannequin, so to speak. And I thought, What an amazing thing. I was so grateful even before it happened. Mm -hmm. And then as I'm thinking, I'm getting more and more grateful because I'm getting more and more ideas. I couldn't have done that. To me, that wouldn't have happened unless I got out of the way and got into a spirit of gratitude for whatever, you know, whatever spirit, whatever the universe was going to send me, it was going to be good. Mm -hmm. I just knew it. That's wonderful. Yeah. And you know, there's the universe sending you an opportunity with using your husband for the assist. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a double play. And it's funny because once you get into the rhythm of it, the flow, and we were talking about it today, and I said, I don't know if I thanked you for kicking that ball to me. And we just kind of laughed because we're very different. You know, we do different things. And I passed to him what it doesn't feel comfortable for me, you know? And he just said, I thought about this thing. He said, I probably could have pulled it. He said, but this is your thing, you know, you. And he made a call and said, listen, I would prefer not to do this, but I know somebody. And I thought, wow, you know, I always (laughs) liked football. (laughs) It just felt like (laughs) catching a pass. It really did. I was just, yeah. So I guess you can tell I'm still kind of up about it. Yeah, that's fun. And I'm going to wind back to what you said at the beginning, that your prayers are for opportunities rather than Mm -hmm. for money. And you kind of handedly said, yeah, maybe I'm going to start praying for money. And the question that comes up for me is if you had an opportunity that you could dive into a project and do something and share yourself and bring something new into the world and in doing so make money or just have somebody give you a wheelbarrow full of money without you having to do anything. Would you then still want an opportunity so that you can share your gifts and talents and skills and bring something new into the world? Yeah, because to me, the whole thing is sharing the gifts, you know, that because I think I have things that will be helpful to people. And you can't put a price on that, at least that I don't know if I'm going in the right direction with the money thing. I mean, 
don't get the idea that I'm independently wealthy and I don't need any money. So that's <laughs> that's not the case at all. No, the it's, impression that I get is that you are willing to put in the work and share your gifts and you know that you're generously compensated for doing so. So money is not an issue, even though you don't have a lifetime supply sitting over in the corner there. <laughs> no, I don't. And I'm open to the fact, I want spirit in the universe to hear this. I'm open to the fact that if you know that comes my way, that's fine. But it's not what drives the engine. Right. It was one of the exercises that we do in our prosperity classes is we say, you know, who here would like to be rich? And everybody raises their hand. You say, who here would like to be happy? And everybody, of course, raises their hand. And he said, if you had to choose, you could be rich or happy, but not both. Who would like to be rich? And none of the hands go up. Right. Because people realize that if I'm happy, then I have enough. There is plenty for me. And I'm not, usually when money gets tight and there are challenges of any variety, we get unhappy. So if we're not unhappy, if we're already happy, then that's sort of, it's implied that that's taken care of. So it's, to me, completely reasonable to be in gratitude for the opportunities because you know that in your wheelhouse, opportunities turn into all of this good. That's the way that the channel works for you. For other people who find they always squander opportunities, it's like, please don't give me another opportunity. It's just another way to feel bad about myself for having dropped the ball. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> and I don't, you know what, I started saying, I don't want to get off on a rabbit trail about opportunities, but I think this is, you know, in partnership with gratitude. When the opportunity came to me, it gave me a context in which to do some other things that I was working on hmm. that I didn't see how they were going to all fit together or how they could fit together. I was just doing stuff. And then when the opportunity came and I didn't even realize it at first, I thought, whoa, okay, this fits with that. And guess what? One of the streams that went into this opportunity got a little money attached to it, you know, a little money possibility. And I thought, well, that's interesting because I didn't think about that at first or didn't see how it would fit together. But I guess that's how the universe just works with me. You know, I do what I do. I stay in my lane. And I guess spirits send <laughs> this poor girl if she's going to get anything, we just have to give it to her in her lane because <laughs> <laughs> she's not going to be able to figure out all the other parts, you know. I just And maybe yeah. that's just, that's the way that you work. That's how your channel works. And expecting that it's going to work differently or trying to get it to work differently than you're comfortable with and that is familiar to you, it might be a cross purposes. Why reinvent something when there's something that works? Yeah. 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 Let's take a break and come back and do a prayer that's focused on gratitude. Learn to put practical prayer to work in your life. The steps are simple to learn and let you begin to get real results to create the life of your dreams immediately. Reverend Bill Marcioni's widely acclaimed book, Practical Prayer for Real Results, gives you a clear summary of the new thought principles behind practical prayer and the series of easy-to-understand steps found in the most effective prayers from religions and spiritual practices all over the world and throughout history. Practical prayer is not a replacement for your religion or practice. It's a technique to make the work you do in consciousness even more effective. The book includes 40 prayers on various topics that you can adapt as needed and use as your own. Practical Prayer for Real Results is available in paperback, Kindle, and audiobook on Amazon or at b-the-light.com. That's b-the-light.com. Welcome back to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol, here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. We're going to do a prayer focused on gratitude. And it's one of those ones that kind of curves back on itself because gratitude is a step in a prayer. But when we do a prayer in gratitude, we're opening ourselves up. It's like the dealer's choice. You know, we're going to let the infinite decide what it is that we're going to be grateful for and just <laughs> invite that into our experience. And it winds up being fun. And it's also, 
It might seem counterintuitive. I could pray for anything, any specific thing that I want, any area of my life. And by not calling our shot, we open ourselves up to so much more of the goodness that surrounds us that mm -hmm. it can work even better than if we decided how it's supposed to look. Anything particular in the way of gratitude that you'd like to bring into this? Just how the mental space that it puts us in. And I want to use the word alignment. It really brings us in alignment where in such a way that things can happen. Even things I believe that we may have not thought about as being a part of the prayer or the desire, mm. or maybe a desire from some other point that you forgot about. I just think it aligns us to be in a place of receptivity and openness. Yeah. One of the things that I'm specifically not going to do in this prayer is use the term thank you. And the reason that I'm not going to use the term thank you is because some people, when we say thank you, the you part of it being second person means it is not me. It's somewhere out there. And when we say thank you, God, some people can do that and understand that they're talking about spirit within. And other people, when you say thank you, God, they're imagining the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel with the guy pointing down or something out in the clouds or beyond the galaxy or something somewhere that's not me. Mm -hmm. So when I give thanks, I don't say thank you. I say, I am thankful. I'm grateful. I'm in gratitude. I give great thanks, but it's all about where I am in that gratitude formula rather than thanking somebody external. And dovetailing back to where you started out in the podcast, you know, it's nice etiquette to say thank you, but God does not need you to say thank you. <laughs> God needs to you be in gratitude. So let us do a prayer in gratitude for gratitude for that space of being grateful. So we turn our attention to that infinite creative power that creates everything, the divine source of all that is, the one. It's God, it's spirit, it's mother nature. It is the happy coincidence that brought all of this into being. Whatever it is that we understand to be the source, the creator of everything that exists, it began with only itself. In the beginning was just the one. And the one is sharing itself as its creation sharing its energy and its substance and its intelligence. And that sharing is an act of love. So everything that exists everywhere is God's love unfolding, expressing and revealing itself in a unique and new and different way. I'm so grateful for whatever this confluence of events has been up until now to bring me into this experience of life, to bring each of us into this experience of life with the intelligence and the awareness and the ability to formulate conscious thoughts, to create powerful intentions, to activate that same creative law. I'm so grateful for this good. I am grateful to know that each of us is an expression of the one. Each of us is that divine power and presence, that infinite energy, that limitless love showing up in our own particular form, showing up as the living, moving human embodiments of the divine. So grateful to know that this is true. And I'm grateful for all of the good that's filling our lives in ways that we have expected and come to depend upon and the ways that are delightful and surprising and fun and the ways that even go beyond what we could possibly imagine as good as we could possibly imagine. And even better than that, I'm so grateful for the good that doesn't shower down upon us. It fills us up from within and bursts forth into the universe through us and as us, we are fountains through which that divine good is flowing into the world. And it's filling each of us. It's completely filling and overflowing through each of us in ways that bring joy and prosperity and health and vitality and love and connection and creativity and prosperity and more and more and more of what we understand to be good into our lives, filling us with sweetness fulfilling us with richness. I'm so grateful for this good that's already underway. I'm so grateful to be aware of this creative process. I am so grateful to be the embodiment of that divine presence right here. And now I'm so grateful to have access to this prayer technology that allows me to set this intention and invite this newness and release this into that creative law and have every expectation 
to know that this good is already underway. There's nothing that stands in the way of it. This infinite creative power that does everything, that creates everything, is creating this newness for us now. Differently for each of us, and wonderfully for all of us. I am so, so grateful for all of this good. It's with this feeling of thanks that I speak this word and I release it into that creative law. And I know without any question, it is already responding. It's already saying yes. And so with gratitude, I let it be. And so it is. Practical Prayer Podcast with Reverend Bill Marcioni and Carol Lawrence is a production of BeTheLight.com. Be-the-light.com. Where you can find more information about practical prayer for real results. Our theme is by Music of Wisdom. You can learn about the spiritual community of New Thought Philadelphia with daily guided meditations, weekly celebrations of spirit, and Reverend Bill's classes in practical spirituality at NewThoughtPhilly.org. This podcast is supported by listeners like you. We're grateful for your tax-deductible donation at newthoughtphilly.org 